Never trust a job board with your dream. I didn't, and that's exactly why I made my first 10k as a Ruby on Rails developer. This video isn't about fairy tales, trust fund magic, or some bootcamp sales pitch. I'm breaking down exactly how I went from confused, broke, and copy pasting code off stack overflow to making my first real money writing Ruby on Rails. Stick around because I'm going to share the mistake that almost made me quit halfway through. Okay, so quick backstory before we dive into the meat of this. I wasn't a CS major. I didn't have a fancy mentor. I literally googled what's the fastest way to build web apps and boom. Boom, Ruby on Rails popped up. Everyone was talking about how it was opinionated, fast to develop, great for startups, and I was like, all right, let's do it. So I started learning. Not from a university or some 12k bootcamp, I used free YouTube tutorials, the Odin project, a couple of cheap Udemy courses. And let me tell you, the first month was pure chaos. I didn't even know what I, <laughs> I didn't even know what a migration was, and I kept hearing this random word called scaffold. But here's what I did differently. I started building immediately. Like day three into learning Rails, I started making this dumb little recipe app. Ugly as sin, but it worked. And that was all I needed, a taste of power. Now before we jump into how I actually made money, let me be super honest about this. Learning Rails is not what got me paid. Let me explain. You see, tech skills are just half the story. The other half is finding people who will actually pay you to use those skills. And here's where most people fail. They spend months tweaking their portfolio, redoing their resume, applying to jobs like it's their 9 to 5, and then sitting there wondering why no one's calling them back. That's not what I did. After about two months of building random projects, a blog, a fake job board, a clone of Reddit, I made a very different move. I joined communities, Reddit subs like r slash rails, indie hacker forums, small business Facebook groups, even LinkedIn posts where people complained about needing dev help. And that's when I started seeing it. People had problems, real ones, like, hey, I need a basic CRUD app to manage bookings for my side hustle, or I need someone to fix my broken payment flow in Stripe. These weren't million dollar companies, they were scrappy founders, freelancers, and small businesses. And I realized, I don't need to be some Silicon Valley genius, I just need to solve one small problem fast. The first gig I got was $300. It was to fix a form that wasn't submitting right on a Rails 5 app. It took me about four hours of Google and trial and error. But it worked. I got paid via PayPal and that was it. Now here's where things started to snowball. I posted on a subreddit offering to do some Rails development for cheap. Fast turnaround, small projects welcome. No BS, just my GitHub link and a few sentences about what I could do. That got me two DMs. One of them turned into a $500 gig. I built a basic booking system for a guy running a local tennis academy. With month four of learning Rails, I'd made about 1200 total. Still not impressive, I know, but then it clicked. Instead of waiting for people to come to me, I started reaching out. Not cold emailing random CEOs, but looking for posts and comments where people were complaining about something technical and replying with helpful stuff. One guy on Indie Hackers posted, I've been trying to integrate Stripe with Rails for two days, losing my mind. I messaged him like, I just finished doing that exact thing. I'm happy to walk you through it or do it for cheap. He replied, and that Stripe integration turned into a $700 gig. Then that guy referred me to his friend who needed an MVP built for a niche e-commerce store, and that project was 3k. It was game on. Let's pause here for a second, because I want to talk about the biggest challenge I hit. Imposter syndrome. It hit me like a truck. Every time I got a new gig, a little voice in my head would whisper, what if you mess this up? What if they find out you're a fraud? It was paralyzing. Like I literally delayed a simple form redesign for three days just because I was scared of breaking something. But here's what helped. I stopped pretending I was a senior developer. In every project, I was super honest about what I could do. If I wasn't sure about something, I'd say, let me look into that and get back to you. And you know what? Clients respected that more than me pretending to be some hotshot. Confidence isn't about knowing everything. It's about knowing you can figure things out. Okay. Back to the grind. By month six, I was juggling about three to four small clients. Nothing massive. One guy wanted to build a contact form. Another wanted CRUD operations for an internal app. One girl needed help debugging an API call that kept returning nil. I wasn't getting rich but I was getting better and faster. And that's when I made a key decision. I packaged my services. Instead of offering, I'll do anything Rails related, I created three small offers. A quick fix package, which is 150 flat for two hours of debugging or small edits. A feature build package, which was 500 for adding a new feature, for example, authentication, Stripe or dashboards. And then a mini MVP build, which was 1500 plus depending on the scope, but basically full apps with auth, dashboards and payments. I started pitching these in every relevant conversation I saw online. Even made a Notion doc I could quickly share. Clients loved it. They didn't want to negotiate. They wanted clarity. And here's where the key moment happened. The one that pushed me over 10k. A repeat client, the Stripe guy from earlier, came back to me and said, hey, I have this idea for a subscription-based content platform for my industry. Think like a mini Patreon. Can you build it? I scoped it out, pitched 3k, and he said yes. I used Devise for auth, Stripe for recurring payments, Active Storage for file uploads, and Hotwire for dynamic UI. It took me about three weeks. When I got that PayPal notification, my total hit just over $10,000. Six months, no CS degree, no job interviews, no fancy portfolio, just Rails, Reddit, Notion, and a lot of late nights. Now, if you're watching this thinking, that's cool for you, but I'm still 
learning, I don't feel ready. Let me say this. You'll never feel ready. You just have to jump before you're ready and trust that you'll figure it out as you go. Ruby on Rails gives you superpowers, but only if you use them. So here's my advice boiled down. Learn Rails by building things, not just watching tutorials. Hang out where your future clients are. Reddit, indie hackers, small business groups, Twitter DMs. Start small, charge $100, even 50 if needed. You're getting paid to learn. Package your services, give people options, make it easy for them to say yes. Be honest about your skill level, under promise, then Google like crazy and over deliver. And most importantly, be consistent. One client turns into two, two turn into referrals, and suddenly you're making four figures doing something that once made your brain hurt. Today I'm still using Ruby on Rails to build things for clients, and myself. And that first 10k, it wasn't life changing money, but it was life changing confidence. Because once you know people will pay you to solve problems with code, it changes everything. Want to know the exact tools and resources I use to learn Rails and land those first clients? The link to that video is on screen now. Go watch it.